On the podcast today, we are going to dissect chapter 55 of the Tao Te Ching, which makes up the 55th episode of the 81 Meditations on the Tao Te Ching. And as usual, Guyang will read Jia Fu Feng and Jane English's translation, and I will read Derek Lin's translation. If you are filled with virtue, you are like a newborn child. Wasps and serpents will not harm you. Wild beasts will not pounce on you. You will not be attacked by birds of prey. Your bones are soft, your muscles weak, but your grip is firm. You have not experienced the union of men and women, yet you are whole. You are strong. You may shout all day without becoming hoarse. This is perfect harmony. Knowing harmony is constancy. Knowing constancy is enlightenment. It is not wise to rush about. Trying to control the breath causes strain. If too much energy is used, exhaustion follows. This is not the way of Tao. Whatever is contrary to Tao will not last long. Those who hold an abundance of virtue are similar to newborn infants. Poisonous insects do not sting them. Wild beasts do not claw them. Birds of prey do not attack them. Their bones are weak, tendons are soft, but their grasp is firm. They do not know of sexual union but can manifest arousal due to the optimum of essence. They can cry the whole day and yet not be hoarse due to the optimum of harmony. Knowing harmony is said to be constancy. Knowing constancy is said to be clarity. Excessive vitality is said to be inauspicious. Mind overusing energy is said to be aggressive. Things become strong and then grow old. This is called contrary to the Tao. That which is contrary to the Tao will soon perish. So this chapter backs onto the last chapter when we talk about virtue. And now Lao Tzu is speaking about the benefits actually of being soft and flexible as opposed to being inflexible and hard. Yes, um, earlier chapter, chapter 54, we mentioned about virtue. We explained uh, briefly about virtue, but in this chapter it goes into deep, into what really virtue means by here and using analogy of newborn child again again Lao Tzu really likes to use a newborn child analogy because of uh, its uh, uh, innocence and again the state of mind where again newborn child don't have any idea of um, person of who him or herself is and uh, yes it's a very uh, primal but at the same time the most fundamental state of our consciousness that's right and look it's it's an analogy that's used all through most of the spiritual traditions in asia because of as you said of that pure childlike innocence which actually as Lao Tzu is alluding to in this chapter we all still have mm. but we've lost it because of our so the socialization process we've all endured which we've become this person that the newborn infant doesn't know about, but we become this person, this identity, and that actually eclipses, in some sense, the fundamental forces of the whole universe. Yeah, we learn um, who we think we are through the socialization, right? That's where, again, subject, object, uh, the dualism happens, and we start to um, separate ourselves from nature, right? So mm. that's where that illusion of a dualism um, arrive to our mind, right? And yep. but again, here is uh, talking about um, a newborn child's innocence and a non-dual state of mind, where uh, we need to pursue to get back to that state of mind from transcending um, subject-object dualistic mind through again practicing following Tao. That's right, and I like within this analogy, like the child has an innocence. And also it has like this internal strength because of its relationship to the mother. So the mother nourishes the infant. Obviously the father helps as well, but you know it's, it's a relationship more so when you're an infant with, with the mother. And so the, the child feels safe in the nurturing care of the mother. Mm -hmm. Now Lao Tzu's point here is that those who are in accord with the Tao feel the same safety that they feel like that from the mother but from the Tao itself. And so once you let go 
of this person you think you are when you return to that innocence and you let go of you know not just your personality but just the the attempt to control life and you just let the world be as it will you find yourself come back into accord with the comforting arms of the Tao and so then it doesn't matter what people say about you it doesn't matter what people think about you it doesn't matter about most things because you are in accord with the fundamental reality of nature yes. and so we only f fall out of accord with that when we think we're an identity and then once we're an identity so when we lose that innocence then we need to protect this identity so if someone says something about you then you're, you're already on you know you're already clinching your fist and you're ready to fight you're ready to go uh, because you're trying to protect this artificial persona that you that has actually been just created over time it's a it's an accumulation of things that become your ego mm. and so you want to protect that but when you come in accord with the actual fundamental forces of the universe you don't need to protect yourself you don't care what people think about you and because you you're one with the Tao. And so, you know, a good thing for this for other people is like if you have a YouTube channel, for example, <laughs> <laughs> and you read some of the insane comments that you can get, it, it gives you a, a, a good ability to dissociate from your identity, right. let's say. So, <laughs> because, yeah. you know, people's projections can be often very interesting. So, but that's the point what Lao Tzu is saying is that we need to get back to that innocence to fall back into the womb of the Tao, the, mm. the nurturing care and safety that we feel once we let go of ourselves and let go of trying to control the world. Yes, I think uh, there was chapter 50 or something like that, they're talking about mother and the child analogy, mother being the universe and child being us humans like so we are the children of universe in some sense so i think uh, we were all, we also mentioned about um, b uh, brahman and atman right the brahman being mother here the universe the Tao, and atman being us individuals right so knowing that we are the, that we are the children of universe we are atman that which is brahman which both are identical so that knowing that we feel that comfort in our lives, right? We have no longer agenda to protect and defend, mm. right? Mm. And again, that is accumulation of our concepts and minds which we learned from society and we learn from education and all these things. And again, the, these things are just the old pile of thoughts, right, really. And most of them only does uh, harm to our own true being that not so we need to recognize these things that's right and when we recognize that to look at the baby or the infant analogy as Lao Tzu speaks about in this chapter he uses soft and flexible right as as a reference to a child or, or an innocent baby and so he also says that but the child has a firm grasp right and so when we look at that as spiritual aspirants, what Lao Tzu is speaking about is that we need to be soft and flexible in life. But also you need to have also firm principles. And you need to know when you see BS, you know it's BS and you can just you know turn away and, and guide your life in an efficacious manner. And so it's always when we are hard and inflexible that usually trouble comes our way or it doesn't come our way but we encounter trouble because we are like that if we were soft and flexible it wouldn't be trouble as i mentioned before you can people can say anything about you but you you doesn't matter like it's because you are soft and flexible it doesn't infect your soul and so as spiritual aspirants we need to be like that soft and flexible not not physically i'm talking about here psychologically spiritually mm. obviously Training yourself physically like that through practices like Tai Chi Chuan and, and those type of practices can, in some sense, cultivate a, a mentality of softness and flexibility. But you don't need to practice that type of practice. It's, it's actually innate to us to be soft and flexible. Right. We're only hard and inflexible when we have all these ideas about who we think we are, what we belong to, and this and that. And so then you build an opposition to the world around you when where you're soft 
and flexible, you are moving and dancing with the universe mm. as the universe designed us to. The universe designed us to dance. Mm. It didn't design us to be a stone Buddha yes. and sit there and fight everyone. It wanted us to be the lively Buddha, you know, the, the living Buddha, the, the, sh- the Shramana Buddha, you know, the one with a real sincere spiritual path. But as I said, we're not supposed to just throw our principles away. Yes, yes. You know, we're not supposed to be weak in that sense. You know, we still maintain a firm resolve in our life yes. to realize our dreams or to just be a peaceful person within society. Yes. Nowadays, uh, having the flexible mind, the flexible consciousness is, uh, uh, again, very difficult because uh, we're exposed to so many different informations which only solidify who we think we are, which is our the persona and identity. And that identity is uh, just uh, basically made of uh, lots of concepts and ideas mm. which are not natural, which are not natural to all of us, but we end up trying to defend these ideas basically, right? Because mind always wants to fix its own position. Like you want to put your mind at something and you want it to be fixed there, right? So when it comes to uh, change, then what happens? We get anxious and we get really agitated, we are worried and overly anxious. So that prevents us to... Uh, adapt in different situations but in saying that um, once you have actually a relaxation and a more like a flexible attitude towards life actually very um, liberating that's we all experience this right like when we are super stressed that means mind trying to fix itself to a certain way you are stressed right Mm -hmm. because you are fighting against the change then what do, we, what do we feel? We want to release this stress mm. because our the very nature of our consciousness is actually very spontaneous, flexible. Yeah, there is no fixed fixed mindset in that space. Yeah. So that uh, that's much, because that is natural to us, that's how we feel. We want to ex- release this stress. We want to be free from it yeah. because that... Uh, freedom, the sense of liberation is actually our true uh, state of mind. That's right. Yeah, flexibility with change is, is a difficult thing for anyone to practice. And you know, one of the good translations about so like moving with change is the idea of mastering change, mm. which we find with Zhuangzi, right? Like mastering change is, is a bit different in the sense of that we just go with the flow, dude, you know what I mean? And we just, we move with whatever's happening and then you can sort of lose your way, you can lose your principles as Lao is talking about here. And so the world's so complicated these days where there's so many divisive narratives that are driven by tech companies and this and that trying to confuse people about the nature of reality. When we're already hardwired to understand there's certain non-negotiables in the world, but these companies want you to be confused about these non-negotiables and so they want, in that, in that sense, control, right? And so Zhuangzi would say you need to sort of master change in that sense because even in his time, the overarching narrative was Confucianism, right? And so him being a Taoist was obviously at odds with the collective around him but he mastered a way of how to live with life and in society without becoming a victim of that mm. ideology. Like he always says, you know, you, it's, there's no problem in living within a, in a certain society that runs counter to your natural way of thinking as long as you don't become a victim of the motives of that certain, mm. certain culture. And so we need to master change in that sense where obviously we need to move with the inevitable change of life but at the same time, we need to know what is BS and that when we're moving as well because there are certain non-negotiable principles that humans live by naturally. That's how we evolved. And so there are certain companies and businesses and that in this day and age, media organizations that have a vested interest in you being confused about that. Yes. And so you need to keep your principles and, and just say – and be comfortable in saying – that's BS. I'm not going to ever fall for that because mm. there's a strength in that. 
and Lao Tzu left society f- from that strength. Mm. He didn't want to fight the Confucian society. He left because for him he, it was more important to follow the spiritual path and to be one with nature as opposed to trying to tell people how to be and how to think because you know he probably intuitively felt that Taoism in the end of the day will outlast Confucianism. Mm. And it will because it's, it's our natural sort of spirituality, or the organic spirituality of the universe right. that we all have an intuitive sense about. Whereas when we look at Confucianism or we look at the certain ideologies of the day that have become you know, more totalitarian mm. than democratic, then we know intuitively there's something wrong there. But sometimes people fear doing what is right as opposed to just following the herd. Mm. And so Zhuangzi and Lao Tzu would say, you need to master change in that sense. It doesn't matter, as he, as he alludes to in this chapter, it doesn't matter if people don't like your decisions and, and what you do in life, but you know it's right, so you, just, you know it's natural. Yes. So you continue to follow what is natural. Yes. That following the what is natural in the true sense can only happen from having the pre- grip, the having yeah. that principle, yeah. right? And again, the funny thing is that having that principle is following the Tao at the same time, yeah, right? Yeah. So without having the principle, your life is not going to grow organically or move organically, right? So for that to happen, you need to have certain sense of grip with the principle. And the principle here is like, it's not rocket science, right? No, like, not for it's not something, again, like, uh, yes, gravity, something falls. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's a very basic somewhat and natural, but because uh, people are influenced by this, uh, a lot of it, strange informations these days so they're confused so that they're questioning these things right they start doubting even the law of nature Mm. and they're super confused with how just things are they're questioning so i think that in if uh, if it gets that sort of uh state i think they're really pushing too far in my opinion like they're really just uh, they're way 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 over the line right they're questioning um like you know, something that shouldn't be possible, but they're trying to make it possible, or it, they make it insinuating that it's possible to people, and they, people start believing that, um, you know, like, lie, basically, I think. Yeah. And they get um, almost brainwashed by that sort of ideology, and they tr- they become ambassador of that ideology, right? They're trying to tell people how to think and what to believe. <laughs> So then we are completely off the track of uh, following the Tao. Like you, then you no longer have grip per se. What is your grip? No. You, your your principle changes every time a narrative change. No. That's not principle. No, it's a weak person. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is right because th- that would be like saying a person is soft and flexible with no grip. Mm. So that's a weak person. Right. You don't have spiritual strength. Mm. A, a Taoist or someone who is a true spiritual aspirant are soft and flexible but have grip. They know right from wrong. They know what is BS and what isn't. But they don't follow a path of un-uwe, which is what people want to follow these days. We are following the path of un-uwe, which means we are interfering. We are telling people what to do and how to think. And that is the way. And that is the way. And then there's a lot of people online who think that they're following Taoism, for example, or think that they're teachers of Taoism, but they're activists. And so that's anti-Tao. I mean, there's no way around it. It's okay if you want to be an activist, but don't profess to being some sort of Taoist because you're not. And so another thing about this chapter, which is really good in talking about what we're talking about in relation to the baby was when how Lao Tzu mentions that a baby can cry all day without getting hoarse, right? And so it's an interesting illustration because he's basically talking about that you know, as spiritual aspirants, we can come into harmony with the Tao. And once you're in harmony with the Tao, your energy is inexhaustible. And so one of the great analogies of this, which we have spoken about in previous chapters, is the bellows. Mm. Right? The bellows is completely empty, but it's 
energy and power is inexhaustible. Like it, it just goes all day. You just, just doesn't end. And so this is actually how the Tao is and how it functions mm. through individuals. And so a lot of people will say, how does that person have the energy to create all the content they do or do this and that and succeed at what they're doing? Well, maybe you need to consider that they're at one with the Tao mm. and they outlast others because they're in harmony with what they do. They believe in what they do. And so it's not about money. It's not about fame. It's about propagating what they're doing. You know, it's much like what we do on the podcast, right? Like we do this because we love it. And okay, we're going to continue to do it, right? With my channel, with my writing. It's not that you intentionally plan to outlast others or this and that. It's just that your intention needs to be pure in what you're doing. Because if you're, if you're doing things based on money, then you're not going to get very far. You know, like if you want to do things based on money, create content about money. Right. Because then you will make money, right? Like if, if you're interested in philosophy and spirituality, this isn't a money-making venture. You know, this is about self-exploration. It's about understanding the true nature of reality. And it doesn't mean riches won't come your way. That can happen. Mm. But it means that you have to keep it open that it might not happen, mm. right? But if your intention is pure, you will be like the bellows because your energy will be inexhaustible. And I remember... I think it was Warren Buffett or, or one of those financial guys w said that they didn't make a lot of money doing what they were doing for a long time. But the reason why they became rich was because they outlasted each other. Mm. Now, I'm not insinuating any of these guys are at one with the Dow, don't get me wrong. I'm using it as, just as an illustration of how a lot of times how people become successful. Mm. They become successful just because they outlast their competition. So in some sense, that's how you know if you are personally at one with the Tao, if it's something that you have a pure intention about and you just continue to do this for a, continue, a, a whole lifetime, then that's how you know that maybe this is your li, your organic pattern. You know, this was what you were meant to do in this current incarnation was to be a gardener, to be a philosopher or, or what have you. And so you can only usually find your li as Lao Tzu mentions in this chapter, when you become soft, flexible, and have a firm grasp like a baby. Yeah, when you um, give up something easily, that means that uh, your motivation motivation is not pure, as you mentioned. Intention, motivation, the same thing. That your motivation is not pure or innate, then you can easily give up things, right? Like you become a quitter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that means I think um, that kind of um, individuals uh, maybe need to explore their inner world a little bit, like what they really love to do yeah. and what, they, what really gets them up in the morning and what excites them and what gives them meaning, right? So these things uh, take, play a big part of having a sincere motivation to do something. Otherwise... It's not gonna last. We um, witness this a lot, right? Like, I mean, just close friends or family just around you, or even um, online world, people do start something and it doesn't go very well, but they might just give up in, let's say, six months, right? Yeah. So that means they w their motivation wasn't quite there. They need to um, like reassess themselves a little bit where their heart was at, mm. right? But if your motivation was pure and sincere and something that like uh, you have a, a lot of um, pride mm. uh, about, right? Proud about, like, so then... Um, it becomes um, more like a genuine and a truthful motivation and intention to yourself. So that if it's really meaningful and if it's really important to you, that's a very good motivation, right? Like then you can um, share that uh, with other people and help others. And uh, in return, you will have a lot of good connection of people and also financial um, re rewards will follow after That's that. Right. Mm -hmm. It has to come to you naturally, 
a lot of the lee that we discover in our life usually comes to us naturally you know and so if we look at the average nine to five job well why people feel exhausted at their job and why they don't feel fulfilled or a lack of motivation is because the intention is money and look we've all been there we've yeah. all done that and so but that's a good example of you know how a lot of us live our lives like the problem is we go from that type of mentality of the nine to five and making money into creative creative endeavors and it doesn't work they, they, the, 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 the twain will never meet no. you have to have a creative endeavor or a spiritual endeavor for example from your, a pure place mm. it can't be about making money it can't be about any of this and that right even great artists aren't in it for the money they're in it to express something deep within themselves and so that's why I love uh, what I love most about the writing process mm. is that a writing process in writing a book you're, you're delving into the deeper aspects of yourself in creating this piece of art mm. and so it, it's a very therapeutic endeavor and that's more important in the money than the money you make from the book mm. in my opinion now maybe jk rowling would disagree because <laughs> she makes billions of dollars but yeah. uh, for us little measly authors like myself <laughs> beggars can't be choosers right uh -huh. so you have to it's it's about more of the artistic endeavor yes. and the creative and spiritual endeavor mm. and so i think that in the world that we live in the current climate that we live particularly with social media and these ideas of influences and this and that that sort of creative endeavor that spiritual path is is lost mm. in that because people are focused about the money that they can make from it and this and that where like if you look in this day and age where when you and i were kids when we were asked as young kids you know what do you want to be when you're an adult and you know you want to be a fireman and you know baseball player all sorts of you know things that we thought were pretty cool when we were kids now they want to be youtubers and the one thing about being a YouTuber is anyone can do it. You can start it and say you're a YouTuber with like zero views. Mm. But like is it really something you want to do? Is it something that's really that creative? Mm. Is it something that came to you really naturally or was it just an analytic, dis analytic decision based on making money? I want to get out of this nine-to-five job. So I saw someone who was uh, traveling, so I'm going to create a travel vlog and do it it's like well that's all well and good first of all you need money and resources to do that do you have a personality that's going to be adaptable to being a travel vlogger mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that mm -hmm. go into this and so people are making decisions still based on the nine to five mentality mm -hmm. it hasn't came to them purely naturally actually yeah becoming a youtuber uh, is um, mainly based on like idea of uh, fame as well, I think, and of course as a financial reason too. Mm. But that's based on only uh, from seeing uh, a few individuals who made it, right? Mm. Really, we can just uh, uh, call some names in the one or two hands, and that's about it, really. Yeah, and all um, lots of people who having the same goal to be like those individuals, which are really. You know, a lot of luck and timing and uh, all these things get involved to their success, right? Which people don't really think about. They just um, acting like a fun person and put on some show and whatnot that they all think they're going to make it. That's not true, mm. as we all know. So I think the question has to be like, okay, if you want to be, let's say, a YouTuber, then like how long can you last that should be the question. Of course. So that means how much do you really care for the content that you create? Mm. Or how much uh, uh, does that content mean to you, right? Yeah. So, so again, asking the really primal and very intrinsic uh, motivation to um, go into that. Uh, path right exactly. so if you have that uh, pure motivation to start a youtube channel then yes and and i'm sure that those the people who have that uh pure motivation might be able to last mm. yeah so that should be the question again it doesn't have to be a youtube it doesn't yeah, any kind of um field of um professions that are the same right mm -hmm. like 
why do you choose a certain um, job or you know certain uh, things in business or whatever like it is it do you really love doing that or uh, yeah do you want to be just a rich simply or become famous or something like that yeah. and that'll have its uh, expiry date yeah you have to have a mentality of how Charles Bukowski des- described in his poetry go all the way <laughs> so you know he's he's talking about the struggling artist the creative type And he's saying, like, even if you've got one slice of bread left and that's all you've got, go all the way. And so you need to really have that mentality. Like, people see, you know, me, for example, with what I have with this channel, not saying it's, like, the best thing in the world or anything like that, (laughs) but, you know, with the great audience that I have here and the books that I've written and this and that, and people think it just happens overnight and they missed out on the 15 years I've been doing this. Mm. And so... It doesn't just happen over. I mean, there's some cases where things happen overnight, right? But your intention has to be pure. And so, this thing for me, teaching Eastern philosophy and spirituality, as you know, because you've been there the whole way, has been a 15, 16 year endeavor. Mm. It hasn't been like, here, look, this is what I'm doing on YouTube. We didn't even know YouTube was a viable option mm. until <laughs> not so long ago. So, you know, you have to have Charles Bukowski's mentality of go all the way. You have to have that have to have that <clears throat> inexhaustible power of the Tao mm. guiding you in life. Mm. And again, how do we get there? Like what we mentioned in the previous chapter, you have to find your Lee and you have to let go in the truest sense because we're, we're, we're doubling in on virtue here. Yeah. So again, using the river analogy, if you're fighting the current or if you're holding on to the banks of the river because of fear, you're going to continue to suffer and struggle in life. But yes. as soon as you let go and you just allow the Tao's power to become your power, then it'll guide you where you need to be and you'll naturally find the things that are appealing to you. Maybe it is going to be a YouTuber. Yeah. But it could be a cricket player. It could be an accountant. Yes. You know, it, it, There's all of these strange life journeys that individuals go on. Mm-hmm. And you know, from the outside, we may say, why would someone want to be an accountant? But someone, some people like numbers. They like crunching the numbers. And so they, they're too good at numbers not to be an accountant. <laughs> exactly. So they're made for it, right? Yes. And so thankfully there are accountants because our taxes need to be done. So everything goes together and fits together. Yes. And it only becomes artificial when you're trying to make things happen, when you're trying to control your life and you're trying to fight that current. That's when life doesn't go the way that you want. Mm. And again, that's the hard and inflexible way mm. of of life and so what happens when you when you follow that when you're always hard and tense what happens you get exhausted you can't be tense all the time because everyone has an exhaustion limit some people have a higher threshold Mm. but most of us are at a sort of a same baseline that if you if you're tense for too long of course you're going to give up yeah or you you break you break yeah Yeah. exactly and so when you're in line with the Tao and you're at one with it the concept of giving up doesn't exist Mm. because you would only give up if your intention was impure. Mm. But if your intention was pure, then giving up doesn't even make any sense to you. It's not part of your um, vocabulary. Of course not. (laughs) (laughs) And so in following that, as Lao Tzu talks about, you know, we find we know constancy, right? So we know... As a result, clarity. Mm. And so we, we gain insights by following yes. that that way. There's, yes. Because there's, there's this energy moving through us. It's guiding us in life. And then we live this really beautiful life that mm. we could have never have envisioned because, first of all, as children, we don't know that there's any such fundamental power in the world that guides our life. Mm. We are operating purely from a place of materialism, yeah. as most children are innocently but children are also conscious of something much greater than themselves as well yes but as we get indoctrinated further and further then we lose complete grasp of the nature of the Tao, right Mm. and so we need to come back into harmony with that with that lee at at the core of our being and then that's what will bring yin bring that mutual resonance and interdependence but again it's it's up to the people listening and watching you know are you going to follow the soft and flexible path while having principles or are you yeah. going to do the complete opposite yes 
<laughs> and we know what the complete opposite leads to, right? <laughs> and so that's why Lao Tzu says in this one, like when we do f- follow the, the hard and inflexible path, that's when we begin to perish as psychologically as people. That's right. Yeah. It's really um, pushing ourselves to the limit, right? And mm. rotten from inside out, really, the perish. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah, we're rotten from inside out. And yeah. because we've taken on a perspective too where our worldview is shaped by us, what, what we experience mm. as opposed to the wellspring within us that comes from within to without. Yes. And so those with that in the power of the bellows, the inexhaustible power, it's coming from within to without. That's the difference with, uh, as opposed to the materialist perspective yes. and probably the atheist perspective. Mm-hmm. So, guys, we hope you enjoyed and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>